She is the state representative of the 40th District, which covers Birmingham and surrounding communities. Mari, welcome back to the Megacast. Thanks for having me. Good to have you with us again. Uh, You know, needless to say, it's uh, been a little crazy in that town up there that you hang out in in Lansing the last couple of days. And I said it many times. I said untangling all this is going to be harder than than it was when we first started reacting. No question about it. Uh, just to share very quickly with our audience the news, the governor extended the stay-at-home order for 28 days. has been working on releasing other things. Uh, the legislature primarily uh, led by the Republicans has said, hey, hang on a minute. We want to we want to play a part and then it kind of bubbled over yesterday a little bit uh do i have that right and you want to update folks on what's been going on in lansing yeah so um i can understand that it's been a little bit confusing um because things change rather quickly um and things that are happening in the legislature and then things happening in the executive um, branch um, aren't uh, really quite matching up right now and so um just to give kind of a recap Um, Essentially yesterday, I voted on um, a few pieces of legislation, um, two of which dealt specifically with executive orders, uh, some of which um, attempted to codify some of the executive orders that were put in place. Um, However, uh, I voted against it. Frankly, um, first of all, I never saw the bill that was negotiated in the first place. So um, I tend to not like to vote um, yes for something that I haven't read before. Um, But more importantly, um, from my understanding of, of all of that, Um, it doesn't really make much sense to me to codify a temporary executive order into law. Um, That doesn't make any sense because we'll have to go back in and repeal the law within a certain very short period of time, whereas an executive order with the stroke of a pen can be undone. Um, It's a much faster way to deal with a crisis. Um, And frankly, I mean, Speaker Chatfield from the beginning of the coronavirus uh, outbreak here in Michigan has said that the governor, uh, Governor Whitmer, is best positioned to handle Uh, this crisis and so um was a little bit confused as to why we were doing what we were doing yesterday so you were in you were in lansing yesterday presume you weren't doing this virtually you were there and here's what we saw on television uh representative manugian we we saw in the gallery a lot of folks there um protesting getting loud and even even some of them with uh with firearms can you talk, is that really what was going on? And, and can you can you share your experiences from yesterday? Yeah, uh, absolutely no problem. Um, so uh, the gallery you're referencing is the Senate gallery. Um, in the House of Representatives, there's 110 of us that serve. Um, unfortunately, now 109, given uh, Representative Isaac Robinson's passing uh, due to coronavirus. Um, and so the 109 of us um, were assigned uh, seats, uh, either to sit at our assigned desks that we normally sit at uh, when times are uh, not during a global pandemic, or um, there were also seats where different representatives were positioned throughout the gallery so we could maintain social distancing. Um, and so in the House of Representatives, uh, the gallery was not open to the public because that's where representatives were sitting. However, on the Senate side, since there's only 38 of them that serve, Uh, they were all sitting at their desks. Uh, They were able to be further apart from one another. And so uh, the gallery uh, throughout part of the day um, during session ended up being open to visitors. Um, That was originally not part of the plan. um, And then things uh, changed. So um, I will say this, there was probably about, I would say anywhere between 250 to 350 um, very loud armed protesters outside of the Capitol. Um, I will say this, like, we have a very rich history of hunting and sportsmanship and um, sportsman uh, activities in Michigan. I'm like not um, opposed to any of that at all. Um, it's something that is really important to the culture of our state. Um, but to see that happening at the Capitol um, was, you know, even more to me, um, I'll be honest with you, was more concerning for me personally. Um, I was more concerned for my physical safety than I am on open carry day. Uh, which is typically the day that uh, folks rally um, in favor of uh, their Second Amendment rights uh, by which they interpret the Second Amendment. State Representative Mari Manugian joining us. She is our uh, state representative from the 40th District serving Birmingham and and other area communities. And uh, thank you for sharing all that. I just what we saw on TV. I mean, I, I, it was scary just watching it. Forget your opinion on you know where one side is and where the other side is. 
It is. Yep. It just it, it looked like it was a scary thing. Did the uh, did you feel comfortable that the state police who provide protection for you and other people at the Capitol uh, were, were had things under control or did you worry that it could get ugly? Um, so I will say this, our um, Capitol Police, our sergeants at arms, our um, Michigan State Police did a really, really good job of keeping folks in that building safe yesterday. And I commend them immensely. Um, you know, for me during session, I wasn't really able to see the, what was happening outside of those doors uh, that they were protecting, um, you know, from, frankly, um, I'm just going to call it like I saw it, it was an angry mob. Um, people were screaming and yelling. Um, when we were trying to do business in the chamber, there was a dull roar. You could hear a, like a dull roar of just like people's voices just screaming and yelling. Um, and, you know, coming to find out after I got home, went back and reviewed some of the video that was taken. And I mean, they were screaming, let us in. And like at the threshold of the floor of the house where guests are not allowed on the floor of the house unless they're pre-approved, that, that group of people was not going to be allowed there to begin with. Um, and so it, you know, it was, um, definitely something that I, I, I called it surreal yesterday. It's not something I ever expected, uh, to be, um, confronting when serving. At the no. And I've been, I've been, uh, in and in and out of the, uh, journalistic business for many years here in the state of Michigan. And when I've been in, I've been covering statewide issues and spent a lot of time at the Capitol. And I was kind of surprised what I saw on television yesterday. Let's get back to the issues at hand. So the governor is trying to open things up. And step by step, we're going to get construction open up on the home construction, open up on the 7th. That should have a big impact on our Oakland County communities that are tuning in today. A lot of residential construction has been suspended. Uh, we've got, you know, different retail establishments opening up. The big boxes have opened up a little more. Uh, step by step, we are seeing things open. We now have dates for um, our, uh, our our campgrounds opening up around the state of Michigan. It won't be for Memorial Day, but those are starting right. to open up. So we're starting to see things open up, and I assume I assume we're going to see uh, manufacturing begin to open up here in the state of Michigan. We we haven't heard a date from the governor, but we assume all that is going on. Are you happy with the way things are going? And I know you're a Democrat, and she's a Democrat, so you may not be able to say anything you I want, mean, but. Well, are you this happy with the, the way thing. it's going? So so I just want to make a quick clarification from sure. something you said at the top. Um, uh, the extension to uh, May 28th is not an extension of stay home, stay safe. It's an extension of the emergency declaration. Um, those are two different things. Correct. And it's okay. Um, it, it, people conflate the two all the time. Um, it can be a, a little bit confusing. Um, so I'm just going to take a second to outline the difference between those two things because I think it's incredibly important for folks to understand what that difference is. Um, so stay home, stay safe is the order that we're currently under, right? So um, you shouldn't be leaving your uh, personal dwelling for anything other than um, essential goods, or if you have ordered something for contactless delivery from, or contactless pickup or delivery from um, any establishment that's offering that right now. Um, however, the state of emergency doesn't have anything to do with you having to stay in your home. The state of emergency is what is important for us to be able to do uh, what we can to draw down federal dollars to have us address the crisis, right? So um, those are your tax dollars you've already paid in your federal taxes that we need to be able to access as a state in order to um, get PPE to our fire departments and our first responders, um, also to pay hazard pay to those folks. And the concern that I had uh, when there was debate about not extending the state of emergency was uh, many other states around the country have already extended their states of emergency, which means that they're drawing from that same pot of money that we already are. So if we give up on that, if we say no thank you, where are we going to get the money from, right? We've already paid those taxes to the feds. That's our money that we should be, be, be able to draw from. And so for me, a state of emergency extension was a no-brainer. Um, we already know that there's going to be some major budget shortfalls this year, um, and we should be doing everything we can to capture federal dollars. Uh, Mari, thank you for uh, for making that clear, and I apologize if I misspoke. Uh, stay at home runs through currently the 15th. 
of the month. Yep. And 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 we're again, I think we're seeing a lot of really good moves uh, by the governor to begin to open things up, which should make people happy that want to see things open up quicker. But uh, leaving all the political, leaving everything that happened yesterday, yeah. all that stuff aside for a second, it seems like the issue right now is can we open up some communities in Michigan sooner than other communities in Michigan? That's that's the core issue. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, we've seen through a couple of different plans um, an idea of uh, sort of this regionalism approach. And um, frankly, uh, when the GOP plan came out, uh, the idea of opening things up regionally wasn't all that bad. Um, my biggest concern was that there wasn't really any um, increase in testing that was outlined in that plan. Um, in the current version of the governor's plan, um, it does base a lot of what those decisions are made on in science and sort of that data-driven approach that you know, we need to understand how much testing we can get done, whether or not that testing can happen. Are we doing screenings um, as people are going into work? Um, but the thing about the regionalism piece, I just want to highlight that in the last 10 days, there's actually been a 190% increase in positive cases in Kent County, a 230% increase in Ionia County, and a 133% increase in Allegan County in cases, and a, and a 97% increase in Kalamazoo County. So it looks like things are um, getting better for us here in the Metro Detroit area, but there are other parts of our state that are seeing a major uptick and an upswing in cases. Um, and so, you know, as uh, we continue to collect that data and have a better understanding of how this virus is spreading, um, we do need to, you know, be mindful that um, there are some communities that are still uh, very hard hit right now. Anything uh, you want to say to folks right here at home? And thank you for sharing all that. I appreciate that. We have been seeing those peaks in West Michigan, and, you know, it really is scary. And uh, they're they're going to go through over there what we went through over here on our side of the state. So uh, we wish the best for them, and, and hopefully uh, they'll get their curve flattened out as well. Um, anything else happening close to home? Anything else you want to talk to folks in uh, your own backyard and in your district about before we say so long? I mean, the one thing I'll just continue to say is if you have um, the means, please continue to um, support our local small businesses here. Um, I'm in Birmingham, so have picked up uh, takeout a couple nights this past week um, that I hadn't been doing previously. And just want to say how um, wonderful and professional everyone has been, how quick and easy it is to do all of that. Um, so if you have the ability to do it, um, continue to support our small businesses so they're here for us uh, when all of this is over. It's, um, you know, Birmingham was on fire right before all this happened. We were just talking to uh, Stuart Sherman. I don't know if you heard that or not. I'm sure you know yep. him. Um, but, you know, Birmingham's, know on, on, well. <laughs> Birmingham's on fire. We're getting ready to, you know, do infrastructure improvements right on Maple Road right now. And, and a new hotel and a lot of great establishments. Everything's going great. So uh, we hope as this comes to a close that Birmingham and all of our other communities around our area will rebound and and we want all the businesses that can to be with us uh, as this uh, all comes back. So um, I exactly. applaud and support what you just said about getting out there and supporting those restaurants. So, uh, Mari Manugian, thank you. It's, it's always great having you on. I appreciate it. Um, you represent our district well, and good to talk to you today. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, guys. Take care. Mari Manugian, 40th District here in uh, in our area.